Hey everyone, welcome to Average Joe Preparedness. My name's Rick, and I'm still an average Joe. Okay, we got a lot of things to go over today because it's been a while since I made a video, and there's a lot of stuff going on, and I don't make short videos. I know I should because that's what the algorithm and people look at. They look at short stuff because they got a short attention span. But uh, yeah, it's not the way I do things. So we're gonna go over some housekeeping, uh, what I've been up to, we'll talk about the road trip, yes, and then we're going to go over once again what this channel is about is basic emer emergency preparedness. I'm, I went over a first aid kit and I busted it out and I got a list from the Red Cross of what you should have. This is the one that's in my house. I was going over it uh, to make sure stuff hasn't expired or got dirty, the packages got broken into and refill it on stuff that you use, uh, uh, boo-boo kit stuff, I guess, if you want to call it that that uh, uh, needs to be replaced. And then we're gonna go over some practical preparedness and then we're gonna go over some other stuff. Yes? All right, let's get started. Okay, first thing under what I call housekeeping is comments uh, in the comment section. If you make comments in the comment section, for those that have been here a while, you know this, I, I, I usually look at them the next time I go to make a video. So I know some people, they look at them all the time and. I replied to them as best I can. I think I've replied to almost every single one. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go over two comments and they were on the video that has to do with the get home bag, again, for the lovely lady in my life because she changed jobs. So I figured it was an excellent opportunity to go over it, change some stuff out, see what was there, critique it, blah, blah, blah. So the first one, and I haven't deleted it, you'll find it if it's there. And I left it there on purpose, let me say that up front. And that is, a sexist it is a blatant sexist comment and somebody might say rick why would you leave it there and i'll tell you why because someone told me once everyone can be used as an example either a good one or a bad one now as far as i can see there's only two possibilities to why somebody would make that comment number one they thought it was funny <laughs> or they actually believed it right and neither one of those is any better than the other okay there's there's things i don't deal with and that's because i've experienced i've been around the world and i, I, I and i learn from my life i don't just go through it like a zombie or whatever and so sexist comment is on the list of things that i think is absolutely friggin stupid now if you want to have a discussion about it you can but you're gonna lose because there's nothing to it and either way see what i'm saying Men aren't better than women, and women aren't better than men. They have their uh, things that they're better at, but uh, other than that, that's it. Now, if you want to argue with me, that's cool, but once again, you're wrong. And if you don't like being wrong, go somewhere else, because you're friggin' stupid. And when it comes, not necessarily to emergency preparedness, but practical preparedness, remember, it's about lessons. It's about being smart. If you ain't smart, if you're a sexist, I'm gonna, there's a whole list, but this one just came up. You need to leave because you are an idiot. So, uh, what, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, maybe they thought it was funny. Ha, ha, ha. Really? You thought it was funny? Are you freaking kidding me? That's the best joke you can come up with. I can make up spontaneous jokes walking around outside that are funnier than that. It's not funny, man. It, it's not funny at all. It's freaking stupid. So, once again, if you're an idiot, you should. I don't want you on my channel. I don't, you, you shouldn't be here because all I'm going to do is keep pointing out that you're an idiot. And you're probably not going to like it. So you probably want to, I'm just saying, be nice and just go somewhere else and take your idiotness somewhere else. Because you have the right to be an idiot. I don't care. Uh, really. Not, but as long as you're not in my circle. See what I'm saying? You come into my circle and then I'm just going to call you an idiot all the time because that's what you are. So that's what I'm going to call you. Yes? All right. So if anybody's wondering, why didn't Rick delete that comment? Why is it still there? That's the reason why, because I want to prove a point or show a point. It's not proving a point. The person proved themselves that you're a freaking idiot. Jesus Christ, you ain't got nothing better to do. Are you serious? We just troll the internet. I'm going to say something stupid. Damn. Bleh. All right. So uh, I hope that one's covered. And I'll, I don't know if I'm going to delete it or not. You know what I'm saying? I probably will, or I'll just respond to it. You're a freaking idiot and let it sit there. Not sure. Okay. The second comment, and the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes really long uh, responses or responses I think everyone should see, I do on the videos, yes? And so they were talking, and it was a 
critiquing, and I have no problem with it, constructive uh, criticism on what should maybe be in the get home bag for the lovely lady in my life. And I think this is an excellent opportunity to talk about it. And what, what I want to talk about is specifics to people, okay? And, and I'm, I hope I mention it when I talk about get home bags or emergency kits for the car or even when it comes to first aid kits, which we're going to go over, is everything should be tailored to you and your situation. And I mean your situation like temperature, where you're located, you, all of these things. We've gone over before. Yes? Yes. Now, I'm not disagreeing per se as to the critiques or recommendations that he had for the bag. But what I would say is, as of right now, where we are, who we are, our location, because there's a reason why we live here, where we do, is the things that were recommended aren't necessarily high on the priority list. I'm not saying they're not on the list. I'm saying high on the priority list. And I think I mentioned it in a reply, not a video. A reply, someone mentioned that, like, uh, get an electric bike. You know what I'm saying? You put it on the back of the car, and then you can just take it off and you can go. And I replied to that person that if things get worse, we actually have really nice, I'm pointing on them right here. We have bicycles. We have, uh, I guess you call them hybrid. They're street plus they're mountain bikes. And we've put hundreds, thousands of miles on these bikes and we've modified them. They got the little containers on them that carry stuff and blah, blah, blah. If things get to my tripping points and everyone should have them, different tripping points, she'll be going to work with one of those on the back of her vehicle. Yes? Yes. But that was the reply I made in a, in a comment section. And so now I'm letting you guys know. So, and, th and then there's other tripping points as to things that would change what's in the get home bag and the circumstances of her getting from uh, work uh, back home. So, and then there's things, yeah, that we won't talk about. Yay. But yeah, so it'll change. And uh, what is the case in point? What is the case in point? Okay, the bicycles. Oh, yeah, and then I also wanted to remind you guys, which I think I've done before, is if something happens and she needs to get back home, I'll remind you guys again. She has the assets that are available at her work. She has the assets that are available in her vehicle. You're with me? Plus, she has the assets of her, of her get-home bag. So there's other things there that aren't just what I showed you in the get-home bag. And those things also change as my triggers or our triggers occur. Does that make sense? I hope so. So the main point uh, I wanted to make is everybody needs to make some, these things, if it's a get home bag or a vehicle bag or a first aid kit or the stuff you put on your bicycle, now that I'm bringing that up, or whatever, you need to tailor those to you. And it's what you think, and you can take other people's advice into account, but how you see things where you are, the people around you, if you're in the city or urban or summer or spring or winter or, and then what your plan is to get from point A to point B. Now there's general things. You'd be like, well, from point A to point B, you should have this. Okay, that's cool beans, but might be going from point A to point C and then to B. You see what I'm saying? In which case you may need something else or may not need something else. Like there's routes for her to take on the way home. There's, there's roads or directions that she's not going to take. You with me? There's specific ones and there's multiples of those because you should always have a backup. But there's certain areas that will be avoided and there's only like two and they're not very big, if that makes sense. But there's a lot of areas she's going to stay in that are very positive because of where we live. Also, one more thing to take into account is uh, this bag, her get home bag, is not built for the zombie apocalypse. Worst case scenario, I mean, I go with the worst case. It's not built for worst case scenario. So let's say there was a nuclear war or an EMP. That's not what that's designed for, or it would have like radiation suits and something. So let's bring it back down. It's designed for if she can't move her vehicle, let's say there's some sort of massive, um, a mass casualty event or something which traffic is just done, <clears throat> then she can get out and she can go. So, but she still has use of the vehicle for a while. If it's something else, again, hopefully a trigger will uh, occur, our triggers, and everybody should have one, in which case the bicycle will be on the back of the vehicle, and she can just take that off, and she can uh, and she can ride that home. Does that make sense? It's worst case scenarios. Neither one of those happens, something surprising, and she actually has to walk. But what she will have is, first off, I track everything. Hold on, my minute's up. Let me, let me explain something real quick. See, I follow what's going on because I want to look for my triggers. And hopefully... 
I'll see something prior to, in which case she just won't go into work. Or I'll see something during the day, in which case I'll give her a phone call and she'll just leave. But if it's something like boom, 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 no in, no indicator, no nothing, then again, it's this is just the bare necessities to get her home. Does that make any sense? I hope so. Yay. And final thought on this to add to the last thing, I was trying to think of what it was. I had to end the video because I didn't want to stand here going, duh, 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 duh. And that is normies. She's going to have time because although she projects uh, being a normie, and I encourage that when it comes to conversations with people, especially where she works and blah, 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 like your smaggity, is normies are going to take time. You with me? And that time is what she's going to use to her advantage. Because remember, she's got to get out of the city, but the city feels worse. But she can get out of that relatively quick once she gets into the rest of the places that are very positive. But the point being is, worst case scenario is, uh, I understand how people are going to become in a worst case scenario event. However, almost every single time it takes time because normies won't figure it out immediately. You're with me? And the few that do, let's say they're the bad guys, they're not going to be able to do a lot of stuff initially. It's going to have to cascade before they can get away with what they're going to get away with. Yes, just my opinion and just my life experience because that's what I've seen in places that have been bad. Okay, uh, let me see. This video is going to be huge long, so let's let's keep this going quickly. Uh, road trip. I did that road trip. Now, I don't know when I said I was going to see you guys and there was a holiday weekend and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if I actually said how long the road trip was. We were on a road trip for over two weeks, so it wasn't just that weekend. I mean, we started it on that weekend, but did a road trip across the United States and across and did it here and there and saw friends and family, and it was awesome because that's what you need to do. You need to enjoy your life. Again, practical preparedness, emergency preparedness, practical preparedness, maybe this stuff up here, I don't know. But uh, the point is for you to enjoy your life. The point is for you to be happy. The point is for you to be relaxed and comfortable as you can in the world we live in. So that's what we did. We did a road trip and it was, and it was fun. Got to see some stuff that had never been seen before. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm gonna go off and get a drink. Yay. Mm. Ah. Edit your videos better, Rick. Nope, you guys should know if you've been here a while, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, road trip. Have fun. Enjoy your life. So hopefully that explains one reason why it's been a while since the videos, because we were gone for like two weeks. And then the next week uh, was me making up for being gone, because things have to be maintained, my opinion. Things have to be maintained. Life is constantly dragging you to the left. If you want to, If you want to keep going... Uh, you have to keep going. So like it took my, to get my yard back up and there's weeds and there's this and there's that and my house organized and you, you guys picking up what I'm laying down? I hope so. And then if you can tell what I'm looking like is I, I'm working because that's what I do. Can you guys, can you guys see the farmer stand? Do I have a farmer stand? Pretty sure I do. Cause I'm out there doing stuff. And uh, speaking of that, let's go right into the garden. And the yard. So the yard's looking good in the front for suburbia because you know how I have to do that. The backyard is recovering. If you guys are following the drama of my backyard, which I highly doubt many of you are, is last year's drought just friggin' killed it. I mean, fried the ground. It was just a terrible thing. And I'll talk a little bit more. I got, I got notes in a, in a little bit of what I'm doing. We'll go over that. Uh, but let's go ahead and see, I'm looking. So basic, basic emergency preparedness. That's the first thing this channel covers. And we're gonna go over a first aid kit. Now, this first aid kit, I've shown you this guy just before. This is the empty case. I do not endorse Johnson & Johnson. This just happens to be the first aid kit I got. And uh, you guys know if you've been around for a while, everything is modified. I'll show you what's actually in it right now. But uh, yeah, I've shown you guys, this is the ones in the house. So it's a, a little bit more than a boo-boo kit. Yeah, but let's not go crazy, guys. And remember, it is designed to be in the house. It's not designed to be in my car or in a bag or blah, blah, blah. So basically it's the house one, yes? So, and to get some sort of standard, if you want to call it that, I went to the Red Cross and if you go, they actually have a list of things they recommend, we're gonna go over it, that you have in a first aid kit, yes? Yes. 
Now, I hope I made this perfectly clear and I'm going to do it again is everything should be modified to you. So this is a good place to start. However, you should change things when it comes to your first aid kits. I've shown you the little baby first aid kits, little boo-boo kits that have been changed. The ones we go hiking with and we take stuff out, put different stuff in. So don't be locked into something. These printing out lists and stuff is a place to start. It's like better than looking at a blank sheet of paper. Does that make sense? So let's try to go over this really fast because this video is getting long. You guys can do that little, remember when I told you guys can, there's that little thing that looks like the tools or whatever and you can make me go faster. You still understand me because I talk too slow. Yes? Yes. But, oh man, you guys are going to see, and you know what? You're going to see me with my readers. Yes? Yes. All right, here we go. Awesome. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Minutes up, we'll start right now. Okay, two absorbent compressed dressings, five by nine. Now, a lot of this stuff wasn't, oh, it kills me. A lot of this stuff wasn't in the kit. I have, oh, by the way, these are the five by nine dressings. Well, and I happen to have what's on this list plus other stuff. But I have first aid stuff. I have bags that have like band-aids and stuff and these, these little gauze things we're gonna go over and different size of these things right here. Uh, because just having a first aid kit, once you use the stuff in it, it has to be replaced. And, and it's better to have the stuff to resupply than you just go buy another first aid kit. Does that make sense? And when you have this stuff, if you have multiple first aid kits, which I highly recommend everybody has, one in your vehicle, one, at least one in the house, one in each vehicle, plus your bags and stuff that we've gone over, that you need to resupply those things because they're going to get used. Or they're going to go bad. They're going to get torn open and the such. And those need to be replaced. Yes? Yes. Okay, let's try to just stick with running down this list. Yes? So, two absorbent compressing dressings. Five by nine. I have those. 25 adhesive bandages of assorted size. Basically, band-aids. Yes? Can you guys see these? Do, 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 do. Lined up. And basically, they're different sizes. One relatively large band-aid. Yes? And some little band-aids. Yes. Now remember, this is in my house. So, I mean, if, oh my gosh, I need more bandages. I have them here in the house. So this is just a, something that you grab real fast. Uh, one adhesive cloth, tape, yes. Five antibiotic ointments. Can you guys see those? I actually only have two, but then I have a whole tube because I'm not worried about it because this is in the house. Uh, five antiseptic white packs right here. Little alcohol swabs, I actually have six. Uh, two packs of aspirin. It's actually Motrin. And one emergency blanket is on the list. And let me explain why it's not in my kit. Yes? Yes. Now, the emergency blanket they're referring to, and I actually have one that goes in other, are not the same, technically, as the emergency blankets. I mean, they're close, but they're not the same as the emergency blankets for, like, you know, your bags and stuff when, you, when it comes to, like, bugging out or these things. This is a medical emergency blanket. It is a full length, long, huge one. And that's to keep people warm uh, when they go into shock. Now, I don't need it in my house. I have blankets here. Again, this is designed for my house. Even uh, to a lesser extent, I don't need them in my car because our cars carry, like I have wool blankets and the such and other things that I can use to, to keep it warm in case they're going into shock. But that's what it's for, and that's my reasoning for not having it in my first aid kit. Once again, everything needs to be adapted to you. Yes? Uh, next thing, again, a breathing barrier. It's a one-way check valve, basically, that you use when you're giving someone uh, CPR. Now, there's a couple reasons it's not my kit. Number one, this is in my house. And if I have issue, if you're in my I'm not going to go looking for it. You see what I'm saying? Most of the people that are here are friends and family. Blah, blah, blah. People have a concern with that. That's up to each person to decide for themselves. The other thing is, is in doing C CPR has actually changed. You really don't do the breast anymore. They found out by the compressing the chest. <laughs> I, I don't mean to do that, guys. But to prove a point is that you're actually, they're shallow breasts. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of shallow breasts. Does that make sense? Where they're actually taking off on CPR, the actual... Uh, exchanging of breasts that the most important part is keeping the heartbeat and in that compression it compresses the lungs and decompresses the lungs yes yes people can disagree people can just do cpr they can have the mask i have no issue with it all i'm doing is i'm reading you from the list because somebody might go and say hey it was on your list you didn't say nothing and i'm telling you why it's not in my kit
Okay, one next is one cold compress. Yay! Uh, one three inch gauze rolls. You see these? I actually have two of those. And then it has one roller bandage, four inches wide. I have no idea what one is. I'm gonna Google it, and if it's cool, I'm gonna put it on order and throw it in here if I think I need it. But obviously I haven't needed it because you have a three inch gauze roll and then a four, one inch, four inch, excuse me, roller bandage. I have no idea. Maybe I should look before I made the video. But I have two rolls of these. So again, if things get bad, and I have other ones here at the home, and that's where this thing is designed for. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let's go with this. Uh, five, uh, three by three pads. Yes, sterile pads. Five four by fours. And you guys don't know, I get injured all the time. That's why I have the big ones in here because I, I hurt myself. And that's why I have to go to urgent care all the time. And if I brought that up uh, uh, more often, maybe I should bring it up more often than I hurt myself. Yes, yes. And I do that because I'm active. Okay, oral thermometer. Again, I don't have it in here. We have the little thermometer, you know, they shoot somebody in the forehead with, it tells you what their temperature is. So I don't need it in here, it's, it's in the house. Uh, two triangle bandages. They aren't in here, they're getting them on order, guys. If you remember the last video, that's what the lovely lady in my life wanted in her bag, when I add it to all the bags, I just haven't got to it yet. I feel bad, but that's the way. Uh, next thing is tweezers. You guys see, remember the tweezers? And then finally, an emergency first aid instruction. Almost all first aid kits, I'll put that right there, come with one, yes, and so does this one, again. I don't endorse Johnson & Johnson, guys. just happens to be the thing. I have any problem with their products, though. Just so I let you know. Yes? Okay, next thing is, there's just a few things that I've added. And we'll go over those real quick, and then we'll wrap up the first aid kit. Yes? Yes. Okay, first things first. You notice it didn't say anything about gloves. And I put gloves in all my bags. So, it's a gloves, just in case. You never can tell, guys. And some Q-tips. These are not for cleaning your ears. You guys put oil or gel or ointment on. It's just for moving it around a little bit. Yes? Scissors for cutting the stuff. That wasn't in there either, on their list. You guys know what this is? The adhesive stuff for like ankles and wrists and the such. And it's just something temporary to put on before we go to the urgent care. Ah, here we go. Burn gel. If you guys haven't been around for a really long time, you don't know why this was added. That's because it should be. Burns are a common thing and I got one on my leg a few years back. It's kind of funny to me, but anyways, burn gel. Yes, your little package. You like that little package of burn gel? And this is a non-adhering dressing. Again, it's for burns. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, good on you, but that's what this is. But it's got like a little sticky stuff and you put it on so that way it doesn't stick to the burn. Yes, yes. Okay, now all that stuff, look at it. It all, it all fits back in here, there's still, I could probably squish some more stuff in there if I need to. Yes, yes. Okay, basic emergency preparedness, first aid kit, adapt it to yourself, check it periodically. Yes, all good things, basic emergency preparedness. Uh, let me see, okay, let's go to, we're gonna move to, I keep looking at my notes, practical preparedness. I had some stuff written down that I wanted to talk to you guys about. The first one, and I don't have it, it's in the lovely lady in my life's car. Dang it, I didn't take it out. But uh, on one of the videos I talked about uh, when the power goes out, that uh, they have fans that can be used with these batteries that are used for like tools around the garage or uh, around your yard. Yes, not endorsing any guys, just happens to be what I have. And I said I hadn't had one, I was looking into it. Okay, Father's Day came. And they actually had a deal on it where you get a charger, you get two batteries, and then you can pick some, and one of the things you could pick that goes with it is a fan. It's about yay big. Yes? Yes. Now, the batteries I have and these chargers I've had, I've had for years. Sooner or later, they're going to go out. And so now, and you can tell I have a lot of them stacked up here. Uh, now I have more. Yes, that I don't necessarily need to use. I can put them off to the side and wait for wait for these to burn out, which eventually is going to happen. And then I did some research on the fan, and uh, one of the guys, he tested it, and he was like, yeah, it run, it, he needed to, he, his power went out, he was using it for cooling. And he said for one of these right here, it ran for seven hours. Now that's personal experience, obviously, guys, it's not something to take to the bank or whatever. It's not a guarantee or anything along those lines. But I'm thinking to myself, seven hours, plus I have another charger. 
Seven hours, that's a long time to be able to run that fan, to circulate some air, to put a cooling cloth, a, a, a moist cloth in front of it if I have to. So yeah, and it was on sale. So normally just the charger and the two batteries ran like a little over a hundred bucks, but it was less than a hundred bucks for that. Plus you got the fan. So yay, I actually got one. Hopefully I will never have to use it for that. Sometimes it gets hot in here. Maybe I'll use it for that though. Yes, yes. Okay, the next thing for practical preparedness is gardening. So um, again, and I'm still gardening, but uh, let me make sure I, I make a point. I don't have to grow stuff to eat, okay? I can go and buy food still. However, I mentioned it before, it takes years to learn how to grow stuff. And so it's a good thing to know how to do. And I do stuff on in case something happened and I do stuff on a micro level, I brought this up, that I can easily turn into a macro level if need be. So. Don't judge me on how much I grow and how much I fail because I don't look at it as a failure. That whole nifty thing is I found out what doesn't work. Yes, so eventually I'll find out what does. And once again, it takes a long time to learn how to grow things. It is not as simple as people make it out to be. But let's see. Uh, so I got the cucumbers coming up over here. I'm gonna be planting some more of the, I call it short stuff uh, with the short thing. And that is lettuce and spinach. Lettuce and spinach have a relatively short growing thing. And this one right here, I'm pointing, you guys can't actually see what I'm talking about. But anyways, this plant right here, I planted like three different kinds of lettuce and three different kinds of spinach, and they are all doing fantastic. So I have spinach, lettuce, yay. And I'm getting ready to plant some more because those plants only last so long. You need to cut the little leaves off and eventually the darn things die. Yes, so I'm getting ready to plant some more. I've got a few carrots. I'm getting rid of my old seeds. And people will tell you seeds don't last forever. You with me? And I'm going to counter that here in a second. And so the longer they go, the less they produce. And not a lot of seeds produce 100%. That, so you're starting at a deficit kind of, and it gets worse. But I'm just throwing them all out there, the old ones, uh, because why waste them? I'm not going to throw them away. And even if I only get like 10% to grow, that's 10% of something versus throwing it away and got nothing. Yes? So uh, bell peppers, and I got to finally... Tomatoes are killing me this year. And then I got a pumpkin. Let me tell you about that pumpkin. If I mentioned it before, but I planted pumpkin seeds a couple years ago and they didn't take, they didn't grow. And then last year, I think it was, I planted a blueberry bush back over there by a pine tree to see if it would live and it didn't. But right next to it, a little pumpkin plant grew from like the seeds. I guess I had dug them up from the year prior and then it died. So it didn't do anything and it was, it started growing off its normal time. It was because of when I dug it up. Well, this year before planting season, I mean, we had frost and stuff. Another pumpkin in that exact same place where I planted those seeds started growing and it lived. This is one hardy pumpkin plant. I mean, it's like, I'm growing, I don't care. It's been laying in the dirt for two years, two winters, two summers. You guys picking up what I'm laying out? And it just decided to grow. And we had this long winter and I mean, I'm, I'll tell you what, the pumpkin seeds that come out of those pumpkins, I'm keeping them. You with me on this one? I'm just saying. And when it comes out there, the onion patch is doing well. It always does. Uh, the green beans, I got green beans growing. I've got two green bean plants. You'd be like, that's not a lot of green beans. It is if you've grown green beans, let me tell you, because they are crazy. In about another month, I have trellises. I'm going to grow two more. So these will grow and then, and then these will grow but I don't want them that close together because, oh my God, green beans make a lot of green beans. And I planted them where the corn was last year. And then this year I planted corn where the green beans were last year because they had this thing where they do stuff to the soil. And I'm trying to figure out how to grow corn. And it kills me because I had all this corn grow them up and I'm pulling them out because I want one stock of corn every foot, literally like that far apart. I have four stocks of corn growing. Four stalks of corn, that's nothing, right? Yeah, it's not the point. I'm still tri trying to figure out how to grow it. And if you've been here for a while, you know we use the corn for decorations for Halloween when it dries out. Yes, the corn stalks. Yes. I don't actually plan on growing it to eat. I don't grow it to eat. I grow it for a decoration, but I'm growing to practice growing it. And speaking of corn, uh, what I did and, and seeds is like a few years ago, I took a, a thing of corn that wasn't really good, a corn cob, and I threw it in my shed and let it dry out. And I threw it in my shed. Two years later, it's been two years. Might have been three, actually. But I'm going to say two, so I'm not cheating in case I'm wrong. It's still out there. And this year, I plucked some kernels off of it and planted them. And they grew. That's right. Two years of 
just a thing of corn sitting in my shed, no protection, no nothing, and it's still growing. So I think Mother Nature has a way versus the ones you get in the little bags. They might not be as good. I don't know. I'm not going to argue about quality and stuff, but just letting you know. I planted uh, old uh, uh, corn seeds that I had too. I'm trying to get rid of the other ones. So I planted some that I popped off that little ear of corn and then some. And so I've got both kinds growing. So, and we'll see what happens. And I'll keep the seeds again. I'll take one off this year if I get a corn cob and I'll throw it in the shed. And that way, technically for years, I'll have seeds. Yes? Yes. And I know it's late in the season because our season was late because we had a very long winter here. But I'm still going to try potatoes. Whether I get any to really grow or not, I don't know. But I will not give up the fight on potatoes. Yes? Yes. Okay, a couple other things real quick. Let's see what we got here. Gardening. Oh. Now, uh, when it comes to, I guess we'll call it practical preparedness. And when I told you about my yard... And I mentioned in a video that I'm using a, a DIY liquid fertilizer. So I, I can't be, I, I'm not selling the recipe well, because I took a different recipes and kind of put them together. One of these days I'll go over it and with the ingredients and to what the positive, because I actually looked up the science of it as to what's in it, like beer. Yes, I know, but there's a reason why there's beer, it's carbohydrates, but there's other things. Doop, 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 doop. But maybe by the end of this year, I'll go over the recipe, what it's good for and the results I've had. Because again, I've had dead grass that was just a yard. And it's not just supposed to grow grass and the such. It's supposed to actually heal and nurture your soil. And that's what I'm aiming for. And I want to point out, uh, the other thing is, I have a weed killer that I use that I've made, got a recipe and I, and I make it. But, and it works. It's fantastic. But I want to point out things. Is when you're doing stuff more natural, you know, making it yourself, using ingredients that are less than poisonous and uh, like granulated fertilizers, it kills nutrients in your yard. And when you're, when you're trying to do stuff a little bit more like a hippie, I'm, I'm trying to work in that direction. Some people might say that's actual practical preparedness, being more healthy, using stuff that has less chemicals, uh, using stuff that you can, or using stuff that you can actually make with things that you have around your house in case something goes wrong. Now we're moving in this direction up here. Uh, but it takes time. Like I have a weed killer and unlike... I know there was a, a weed killer, I don't want to mention their name, and it was approved by the FDA and people were using it for decades and then they finally find out that it's causing you cancer. You with me? I have a weed killer that, that I use that I'm pretty sure nothing in it is ever going to cause anyone cancer. The problem with it, problem, is it doesn't kill as well. Now some weeds, I have to spray them like two or three days in a row and then it kills them. You can see they're dying, but I want to make sure those little bad guys are dead because I can't stand weeds. And, but it's not poison. You can squirt it in your mouth. It would taste terrible. Don't get me wrong. But, and, and because there's children, I live in suburbia. So there's children outside playing and there's people have animals and stuff. And I don't want to be spraying poison in my backyard. I have grandchildren and the neighbor's kids come over or whatever. And we have a dog and animals and birds. And I don't want to be spraying poison. You with me? Poison in the environment's probably not a good idea, guys. You see what I'm saying? When we're talking about practical preparedness and, and life lessons. So, but there's no shortcuts in life. Usually the shortcuts in life are bad. You see what I'm saying? I'm bet you round up that one shot, boom. And oh, I use their name, oh, that's too bad. So, and you shoot it and it just kills it overnight, guaranteed. Yeah, and then you get cancer. You see what I'm saying? Mine, you gotta shoot it a couple few days in a row and then it dies, no cancer. So if you feel like moving in that direction, if you're going to look for things, and I'm talking about like fertilizers and and pesticides and weedicides. <laughs> I got to bust myself up once in a while, guys. Sorry. Uh, if you're going to do it more naturally, uh, you're going to find it takes time. Yes? That it's not as quick and easy as these chemicals that they use that end up giving you cancer and poisoning your food and poisoning your soul, soil and, and the such. Yes? Yes. All right. What else are we going to talk about? Oh. <laughs> Now let's go here. So this, this was practical preparedness stuff. And some people might say gardening or killing weed stuff. Maybe, I mean, practical preparedness to me, emergency preparedness right here. Practical preparedness is a wide subject because it covers a lot of people. And some people can take from here and some can take from here and some can take from there. But, and again, it's about lessons and the things. But now we're going to move on to, let's say, worst case scenario. Now you guys know I don't talk about worst case scenario very much because there's a lot to do 
between point A and point B. Yes, there's a lot of stuff in here that needs to be done. So just talking about this tends to, you tend to lose focus on this. And then on the flip side of that coin, taking care of this stuff will set you up for that. Yes, so emergency preparedness, practical preparedness will set you up for worst case scenario. Not 100% success, but a, a, um, you're there. You're like 50%, 75%, depends on what uh, scenario you're looking at. Yes, yes. So let's see what my notes were. Because I don't read you guys the news. Yes, told you that's not going to happen. So I said, just look at the headlines. What I do is uh, each morning and then maybe another time during the day is I, a lot of the stories, I don't even read them because after a while it's stupid. There's only like 182 ways, different stories in the world. You with me? All you got to do is look at the headlines. So look at the headlines and look at the source of what the story is. And you're going to, you, you can get the gist. After a while, you, I know what the story is going to say. I know what words they're going to use. I know blah, 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 blah. But if you want to know what's going on in the world and, and where we are and look for your triggers, that I have my triggers, everybody's got their own triggers to, to do different things, is just look at the headlines. And then once in a while, if it's somewhat reflective of one of your triggers, then maybe click on it and kind of just jump down and look at the first sentence of each paragraph if you want. Reading it is too depressing, and I'm definitely not going to sit here and go over it. A nausea or whatever the hell that nauseum or whatever that word is, uh, not educated that much on oh, just go over it and over it and over it. It's just so depressing. There's no reason to do it. Uh, the next thing is when you are doing it is look for stories that evoke emotions. Now, for those of you that are emotional, um, I don't mean any disrespect by it, but it doesn't help because what you do to control people is use emotions. Oh, emotions, because that's what they're there for. Experiencing them personally, yes, but in using them in writing and describing things and trying to tell the stories, it's emotion. News should not have any. There shouldn't be any emotion in news. Uh, back in the day when I was little, the news had no emotion. And then they would do a feel-good story. It had emotion in it. But they said, this is a feel-good story. You see what I'm saying? It's actually precursor that this would evoke emotion and that's it. And everything else was blah, blah, blah. Because information is just that. It's information. News is just that. It's news. It is just something specific, what happened, the facts. But the more emotion you find in whatever you're reading, the more you should stay away from it. Uh, my opinion only. So, and if you're into it, if you're like, I wanna feel the emotions, well, you can feel them, but you're probably being manipulated. Yes? Yay. See, here's the deal. If you were gonna feel one way or another by giving the facts, that's one thing. But if they have to invoke emotion, then what would you actually have felt with just the facts? Why did they need to do it? Does that make sense? There's no reason for it. It makes no sense. It's not logical. If it's not logical, it makes no sense. If it doesn't make any sense, I avoid it. Yes? Okay, now let's make sure we're clear. I'm talking about when it comes to practical things and making logical decisions in my life. Stay away from emotions. Just my opinion though. Yes, everybody's got their own. You go with your emotion. Mm, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and I mentioned this before. It doesn't matter. I see these things like, well, we need to do this and we need to do that. And you need to send this person money and you need to send that person money and you need to get with these people and you need to go here and uh, rise up. Uh, listen to me very carefully. There are 350 plus million people in the United States, 7 billion plus people in the world. You have no control. No offense intended over the world. You are not stopping what's coming. Rick, man, that sounded terrible. I can, I can, I can go out there and stop stuff. And no, you ain't stopping it. So just so you know, so you're not going to stop it. So what you need to do is be prepared for it to get through it. Know that it's coming. See, and the reason is people think that they can stop it. They don't get ready for it because they believe they can win and it's not going to happen. Well, that's just silly. Say. If you go under the premise that you can't stop it because you can't, then you'll actually spend some effort getting ready for it, whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to be able to stop. If, if, if nature wants to put down an ice storm and freeze stuff up and knock down trees, which is happen branches and stuff and power lines, I can't stop that. Yeah, Rick, but that's not, there's other things. No, 
No, it's the same thing. It's, 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 it's a force. It's irresistible. You're not stopping it. So please stop trying. You can control your small little world. I'm talking about big picture stuff, the world. You're not stopping what's coming, guys. So this is the worst case scenario things. You're not stopping any of it. So when it comes to worst case scenario, you want to look at the headlines so you can see where you are, where your trigger points are. And what I mean by trigger points is once it gets to here, I'm going to do this. Or once it gets to here, I'm going to do this. Each person has to come up with their own. Yes, that's what I mean by that. And then know that you, you're not stopping it. You, you can't stop what's going to happen. People like to think they have so much self-importance. Uh, but the self-importance that you have is to yourself and being able to mitigate what's happening, survive what's happening, get through what's going to happen. Does that make sense? Try to keep your focus there. Again, this is just my opinion, guys. I'm not trying to get into a fight with anybody. But I have in my, my, it's anecdotal. That's what they call it. I think I pronounced that right. In my life experience, and I've had a very broad spectrum of it, these are truths that I've found. Yes? You can see it coming. You ain't stopping it. Yes? Yay. Sorry to leave you guys on such a bummer note. But just to tie a bow in it, let me give you a case in point. And I wrote down some things. Let's say inflation. There is nothing you can do to stop inflation if it's going to happen. If inflation is going to go up, you can't stop it. You see what I'm saying? Uh, resources. If there is a shortage of resources, which a lot of people are talking about in on other channels, there is nothing you can do about it. You do not, most people, you don't produce. You consume. You are a consumer. You are not a producer. Even if your job has got something, 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 something to do with producing, you aren't producing. You with me? Now, there's a few people like, there's like a cattle rancher. He's producing beef, but he, I don't know if he butchers it, but eventually he can figure it out. And there's dairy farmers and they're producing milk and there's farmers that are producing fruits and vegetables. Those are individuals. I'm talking about mostly you guys, people that are watching this channel. You're not a producer. You are a consumer. So if there's a shortage of resources, you can't do anything about it. You're not going to stop it, but you can mitigate it by using less, by stocking up, by learning how to grow. If it's food that you're concerned with, by learning how to grow things, which takes a long time. So you should probably get into it. That's, that's what I'm getting at. And then with those things, when things worst case scenario is danger, we're going to call it danger. You can't stop that from happening. You see what I'm saying? You can mitigate it by certain things and you can survive it and you can maybe thrive depending on your situation. But that's what I'm getting at. Anything you think of, you can't stop. You have, and what I mean by that is you have no control, little or no control, except in your small little area. And that's where you need to focus. People see these big pictures and what is it? Forest through the trees. I see people do that all the time. And there was something movie, you look at a star and you trip over a little straw. You see what I mean? Bring it back down, bring it back down, focus on yourself. Focus on your little world. Only my advice. Yes? yes? Okay, I'm sure this video is way too long. I say that probably every time. Uh, but it is what it is. So, with that, I hope this finds you well. I hope you are happy. I hope you stay positive, And I hope, for whatever it is, you are being prepared.